Hello, I'm Rhys and welcome to the London Bookshop Crawl Online. Um, it is my great privilege to be here online with the wonderful author Annabel Steadman. Annabel, thank you so much for agreeing to spend a little time with us today. No, well, thank you for asking me. I'm so excited. Wonderful. I, I, I guess our first few questions um, are about yourself. Um, I understand you were raised in Kent in the UK. Um, yes, that's right. Would you say that your early life has inspired your writing? Yeah, I think so. I I wrote kind of from a very early age. Um, I've got kind of notebooks from when I'm like sort of six or seven with stories in them. And um, I think uh, I spent a lot of time outside and kind of playing in the kind of Kent countryside and the woods and things like that. And I think it kind of gave me time to be using my imagination, like playing kind of games with my younger brothers and all that kind of thing. Um, and also Kent Libraries is great. Um, I think I was a <laughs> I was a very regular visitor to Deal Library um, and kind of, you know, taking out 12 books at a time. So I think that that definitely kind of inspired me. That's when I first kind of realized that books were something you could do, like you could write them. I, th I think I actually asked a librarian in Deal, like, you know, how do these get here at one point? <laughs> um, just as I was kind of looking down the spines, I kind of, I rem actually remember the moment when I kind of thought, these are people that have written these books, which is silly, but I think as a child, it takes a while for you to actually realise that someone has done that. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely um, kind of the access to libraries in Kent is really great as well. So very yeah. good. Uh, I, I'm going to be completely honest. I am extremely biased whenever anybody says they're from Kent because I live in Kent. So it's not, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know Deal Library quite well. So it's... <laughs> Um, we're uh, we're based in Westgate, not far from Margate, so it's been oh, okay. it's quite uh, quite a nice area, uh, part of the country to be uh, to be living in. So um, and yes, that I agree completely about the library service. Kent libraries are wonderful. So, um, did you always want to be a writer, or was this something that you sort of uh, decided um, at a later age? I think so. I definitely it was the first thing I wanted to be for sure. I think as, as soon as I found out that you could write write the books that I was reading, I was kind of like, yeah, that's a great job. Um, I, I want that. <laughs> um, and I'm already doing it. I mean, I, I think I, I wrote a book when I was, I wrote my first book when I was about 13. Right. Um, it was about pirates and spies, because I obviously couldn't decide like which one I wanted. Which, one to get, which angle to take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and like my main character had red hair like me, I was called Isabel, so <laughs> take from that what you will um but but so yeah I think I I identified it really early I then I think I was a very kind of sensible pragmatic child and I soon kind of I soon started realizing when I said to adults you know I want to be an author they'd be like oh okay that that's difficult you know that kind of reaction um you know have you thought about something else and I think that you know not not my mom my mom has always been like you know do whatever you like but kind of like teachers and things like that uh, were sort of a little bit more kind of like skeptical as I got older and I think I kind of I came to a point where I I realized that I kind of I don't know I think I just shifted my mindset a little bit away from it and thought you know that's too difficult it's not kind of like guaranteed guaranteed salary mm. um, and I think that's when I, I started thinking about um, kind of I thought about languages first and then that kind of like moved to to law after that. Mm. When, when did you st first start writing Scandal out of interest? Um, so I wrote the first draft in summer 2018. Okay. Um, I wrote it in about three months. Um, I wrote it at the same at the same time. I wrote a book for adults, mm. um, and I finished that one first. And so the first agent I had, I was uh, represented me for the adult book, mm. um, but I didn't sell. <laughs> right. um, so that's why there's kind of a gap between like when Skandar got picked up because I changed agents and we I was on submission for a long time with my adult book as well kind yeah. of lingering there <laughs> not hearing anything um so yeah so 20, 2018 I kind of yeah and it, it changed a lot after that I think the first draft was kind of like playing in the world quite a lot the characters really developed at that point and the kind of like it was kind of like an explosion of worlds mm. but then after that I kind of needed a needed a plot <laughs> <laughs> need to be reined in slightly yeah but lots of ideas, I hope, for future books, clearly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm going back to it sometimes and thinking, oh, yeah, that's, that was a good one. <laughs> so I, I'm going to be honest with you. The last two years have been a bit of a roller coaster for all of us, really, with many ups and downs due to the health crisis and everything else that's been going on. But 
Um, in particular, I imagine it's been a bit of a space rocket ride for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, 2020, middle of, you were signed up by Simon & Schuster. Um, then filming rights signed up by Sony swiftly afterwards. And everything seems to have happened in a very short amount of time, I guess. Um, what, have, what have you enjoyed about this rocket of a ride? And is there anything you've found particularly uh, uh, that hasn't been enjoyable about the last few years? <laughs> um, I mean, I think... Simon and Schuster have just been brilliant as publishers. I've really enjoyed working with them. Um, I I love my editors like here and in the states. They've just been they've made they made the book so much so much better um, and kind of so much there's so much depth to it and like their expertise. So I've I've really enjoyed working with them. I think it was really so basically for the first book. I was kind of every time I had an edit, it was lockdown. <laughs> Um, which is it was like it was almost like it was kind of you know f fate every time and like so the, f the November lockdown in London which was really really hard I think af after that in 20 in 2020 um, you know I was editing for the first time and like having them kind of on my screen and like us talking about all this kind of imaginary world you know it was it was I felt really privileged to be able to kind of escape into that and like have something to kind of work towards because I think a lot of people were really struggling with you know not having any, any direction not knowing what what they kind of could do and couldn't do and I was just like I'm gonna sit here in my room and do what they tell me um which is which is really good um and but yeah I think I think it's been hard because uh having got the deal in like September 2020 it was I, I haven't really been to any kind of book events with mm. anyone like I've met a lot of authors online which has been really really nice um, but I mean, I haven't really met <laughs> met anyone. Um, I think so, so for a long time, it felt particularly kind of from 2020 to 2021, kind of September, it felt everything, it didn't feel real at all. And I think I had moments where I was like, have I just, I, I could have made this up because I haven't actually seen anyone. Um, and it's just like, you know, I'm imagining this is these Zoom calls with Sony and it's it's the kind of thing where it does feel like completely unreal. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's it's been hard to kind of like, really celebrate or kind of understand fully kind of process what's been going on because I haven't seen anyone like in the in the real world yes uh, based based on these experiences uh, is there any advice that you would give to any uh, writers who are currently working on their first books or anything that uh, you can sort of recommend to them obviously you've said that th this wasn't the first book that you wrote you persevered you went on to write another um, write this which has been taken up is there any advice you'd uh, particularly feel you could give yeah I think I think just keep at it because mm. I, I almost gave up on Skandar a lot of times I mean I had the idea for it in 2014 right um and I didn't I didn't write it then because I was like training to be a lawyer and trying to be sensible mm. um but you know that was a long time and then you know it was another kind of four years until I actually sat down to write it and and during that during during the time between 2018 and 2020 you know I was go I had a book that didn't sell and I was thinking like this is really stupid I'm never gonna uh, I'm never gonna kind of get there and it is it is really disheart disheartening and it feels like you're on one side of the fence and people that have book deals are on the other side of the fence and you're never going to make it but and and I you know there are so there were so many times when I I just said I I can't deal with this anymore like I don't want to put it out there because I don't want to be rejected again um and you know I can't, I just need to forget about it and do something else because it's kind of becoming it's becoming kind of unsustainable but actually once I kind of took the pressure off a little bit and just had fun with it and then then it kind of and I wrote it for myself rather than kind of trying to be published um I think that's when it I, I kind of realized it was something that I actually really enjoyed and then the kind of the good things happened after that so I think just trying to trying to enjoy it but also also not giving up on it if it's something that you really want to do because it does happen it just it's a there's lots of things that have to come together like it's a lot about luck um, and I'm really really lucky that at the time that all came together for me and like it will happen it just it just can take some time yeah, uh, I think the thing that you just said there, which was uh, sort of uh, hit home the most, is you've got to enjoy it. I think that was, uh, and and clearly that's what you were going through at that point, where you started to enjoy it, and then it worked. Yeah, so it's sort of that's that's very uh, very encouraging. Uh, yeah. 
I, I guess but I'm going to talk briefly about Scandar. I'm not going to say too much because <laughs> I don't want to give too much away because it's obviously a few uh, um, a few months until until it uh, actually comes out. So uh, first book, Scandar and the Unicorn Thief, published by Simon and Schuster, released on April the 28th. And I'm going to list a few of the bookshop cruel participants where you can pre-order it. Um, and um, would you be able to give us just a brief synopsis of the book? Yeah, so, so Skandar and the Unicorn Thief uh, is set in a world where uh, unicorns don't belong in fairy tales, they belong in nightmares, um, and they can only be tamed by the rider that hatches them. Um, and the story follows 13-year-old Skandar Smith, who is desperate to become a unicorn rider. He wants to leave his life on the mainland behind um, and go to the island where the unicorns are and where you, you would go to the hatchery um, and hatch your own unicorn. Um, but then uh, the weaver steals the most powerful unicorn in the world um, and things get a little bit more complicated for Skandar than, uh, than he would have imagined, I suppose. That's really good synopsis. It's a very good, uh, very good starting point. You very kindly sent us a review copy of the book, and by this evening, I will have finished reading it. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to give anything away, but I will. Um, I, we're going to write a separate review because my wife wants to read it as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I absolutely love it. By the way, oh, just okay. to just to confirm, it is it is v- extremely fun and really well written, and I'm absolutely adore the storyline and the, the pretext i've never trusted unicorns i don't think any of us really should have really but uh, there we go um what i will say though um about the book is i appreciated in your writing the connection to families um be that skandar and his family or skandar and his friends or uh, um, his friends and their families um there's lots of little mentions um and i found this rather wonderful as it adds so much to the whole storyline was this something you were aiming to do when you were writing the book or yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I'm I'm really, really close with um, my family. I've got two younger brothers um, and um, my mum and dad got divorced when I was about Skandar's age, actually. Okay. Um, and so my mum brought us up on her own, um, kind of through all the horrible teenage years and all that kind of thing. Mm. Um, and so we've always been a kind of really close knit um, group. Um, mm. And I think, but also, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on in the background for us as children that wasn't that wasn't particularly kind of like normal for children and it's hard when your parents um get divorced kind of in difficult circumstances um and you know you're kind of having to hide that when you're going to school and you have to pretend that you're okay and I think that kind of like seeped into what Skandar and Ken have to do um because that that you know their dad loves them a lot and mm. he, you know he's a, he's a good he's a good dad but sometimes he's not and I think you know he's he's struggling as an adult and that kind of has an effect on them um but i think it's also it's also kind of realistic that you know sometimes parents don't can't can't do their best because they're not well um and like children you know children have to kind of like take on burdens that they they kind of shouldn't have to so um i think that's that's kind of where that that crept in and mm. i think also I wanted it's hopefully it's going to be a five book series um so I really wanted the characters to be kind of well-rounded and to feel like they were real like you could meet them and they'd say oh yeah my you know my, my dad this or my sister this or mm. um and I wanted them to have kind of different sort of family dynamics and yes. like friendships with each other so that I can kind of play with as I go forward kind of through the story and they grow up because they will be kind of growing up every book um Feel free not to name any names in the book, obviously, but would you say you relate to any one of the characters? Um, I think it's, I think, de- I think definitely Skandar, but I think that's kind of unavoidable given that he's the kind of like n- narrative voice, yeah. even though it's in the third person. Um, but also Flo quite a lot. I think, okay. I, 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 <laughs> um, you know, she she's sort of like a little bit, yeah, she likes to stay in rather than get out to parties. And I can really relate to that. Um, and she I did like that be- bit of the book. <laughs> she likes to be a peacemaker and she doesn't like arguments and I think like a, a lot of that I've taken taken from myself as well I kind of wish I was Bobby but I'm not, not. <laughs> <laughs> um the book has got such a wonderful campaign running with it um the trailer video in particular I particularly enjoy it. I think that's really well well crafted and well done by uh by your um publicist and team um and I'm really pleased to see that you're releasing a indie bookshop special edition 
um, which you can pre-order. Again, I'm going to put that in the details below. Um, are there any events in your diary which you're um, doing any signings or looking forward to or anything like that? So I, I don't actually know yet. I've got a, I've got a, um, a big meeting coming up in about a week where I think I'm going to be told all the things that, um, that I'm going to be doing. But I'm definitely going to be visiting a lot of bookshops. Um, I'm def I've been talking to kind of booksellers as they've come back to me, you know, saying they've enjoyed the book and they've been saying, you know, come and we can set something up, which I'm really keen to do. Um, and, you know, I think there'll be lots of school visits as well um, mm. in my future, which I'm really looking forward to. But I don't know for sure what, what is happening yet. Very good. Um, uh, final question, then, in which case. So th this is actually not linked to any of the books or anything like that. It's actually linked to your video from last year. Um, you very kindly filmed um, for us uh, five quick things, which we really, really appreciated. And it was really well received. It was quite a few people. We sent out an, an, um, an email at the end of uh, Bookshop Call just with a, um, could you fill in this form and tell us what you enjoyed? And you were mentioned quite a few times, which was quite, quite, which I'm, <laughs> you should take quite a lot from. But it's uh, one of the books you mentioned uh, was uh, Dragon Legends. And I know quite a few people purchased it, including myself um so much so that uh I, I now have all three of them um is there a particular recommendation that you would have for this year things that are about to come out obviously other than your book which clearly everyone should buy um is there any recommendation you'd like to give us so i have a few again can, yeah, I, can I okay so so the first one um it's not it's uh hasn't got a cover yet but, and I've, I've been able to read a, an early edition of it, but it's an author that I actually recommended last year as well, Aisha Bushby. Um, she's got a book coming out this year in June called A Flash of Fireflies. Um, and it's really, um, yeah, I got, I got, I'm really lucky to have read an early draft of it. Um, and it's about a, a girl who moves to England and to, into this like fairy tale cottage and the fireflies kind of whisper and it's kind of very magical, but there's also kind of a darkness to it. Um, it's kind of age 10 plus and I think it's coming out in June um, so really look out for that one I think the cover reveal is coming pretty soon as well um, and you can already I kind of order it from online um, another one I have so this book is out so I thought I should give some that's out uh, Fireborn, Fireborn um, by yes. Ashling Fowler um, I love this book and I love Ashling's writing um, and I've also been lucky enough to read an early draft of book two which is great so um yeah that's one from me that's already out um also strange world travel agency mm -hmm. so there's already two of these that you can buy yes i've got one um, over here somewhere <laughs> um, and the third one's coming out um in april um which is the final one of the trilogy um and i just love these they're so much fun um you know i'm a big fan of kind of like magical world real world stuff as you can probably um, understand from Skandar and yep. you know, going into a suitcase and a new world great um and okay I've got two more and I'll be quick <laughs> um I've just read this book it's called Rebel Skies um by Anne Salen um and basically it's in this world where um origami kind of creatures come to life and people can manipulate paper um and they kind of have all the power and they can like make these beasts with them and kind of fight with paper it's just amazing the world mm. building is incredible um and that is coming out in may um and yeah then the last one i have um is onyeka i don't know if, if anyone can see these kind of proofs are going out at the moment which is published by sun and schuster as well um yeah onyeka and the academy of the sun by tola okogu um this is amazing it's kind of like superheroes um it's really kind of about like um you know like finding your power and um it's kind of that sort of school training that has that scandal has as well um and it's set in a kind of futuristic nigeria it's excellent um and that is also coming out in june so, brilliant thank you so much for that that's that's a that's, that's a great selection I was, there's a, um, i'm pleased to see there's a few of them that i've got on my shelf which is quite nice um <laughs> and uh, uh Annabelle, thank you so much for taking time today just to give us uh, give us this interview. It really is appreciated. Um, again, uh, Scandal and Unicorn Thief being published, Simon & Schuster, released April 28th. We really do recommend you purchase a copy. It is very good. Um, and I wish you all the best in 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.